If you're watching this video, that means that in one way or another, you are interested in NFTs, which means that you have come to the right place because that's what we're going to talk about today. In this video, we're going to go over the overall state of the NFT market. We're going to dive into things that have happened in the past week. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. To start, if you are someone who is interested in NFTs and you're looking for a place to hang out, feel free to join Canto Labs. It is my community that I have cultivated. It has been one of the most active Discord groups in the NFT community that I've seen during this bear market that we've had. I'll make sure to put the link down below. Feel free to join up. And to everyone that's already in it, shout out to the Canto fam. So to start this video, I wanted to take a look at the overall volume that has been going through the NFT market over the past couple months. And unfortunately, we are not in the best market. I think a lot of people already realize this with talks of a recession, with inflation going up and all this kind of thing. And so what we're looking at right here is the OpenSea daily volume for the past couple months. Something that you do not want to see is that yesterday was the worst day in terms of USD and ETH volume that we have seen since July of last year. This right here is when things started to heat up. This is July of 2021. And unfortunately, if you look, we are right about at that level that we were at a year ago, right about now. Even though the volume hasn't been the best in the NFT market in comparison to how it was the past couple months, there have still been a lot of opportunities to make good plays, to make good money in the NFT space. It's just a lot harder than it used to be. So to move over to the OpenSea top volume in the past 24 hours, and I use this because obviously the most people use OpenSea. I don't really, I don't really trade on OpenSea that often. But with that being said, the project that's done the best in the past 24 hours is Renga. And it's this storytelling NFT that has seen insane amounts of volume. I saw these at 0.5. They ran really hard today. They're sitting at 1.45 right now. And what's cool about these is that not only are they a storytelling NFT, which is what NFT Twitter has been talking a lot about as potentially being the next meta, but there's these black boxes that are pretty much loot boxes, right? So like if you have one of these, you can rip it open, you can potentially get a rare or maybe you get a floor. So it's like, you know, getting one of these boxes, it's like one of the, if you're familiar with the artifact vials, it's the same kind of thing. So if you hold on to one of these, if this project ends up doing well, who knows? Maybe some DGENs will pay top dollar for the boxes, but I like this mechanic. I think it's pretty cool. And then following Renga in volume are some of the Yuga Labs assets such as Mutant Apes, Crypto Punks, Bored Apes, Other Deeds. People are buying Cool Cats for some reason, and then Moonbirds is following. Now, a lot of people have been asking, they're like, Ash, so do you think that this is the bottom? Do you think that, that the NFT market is bottomed out and we're ready for a bounce? And this is not financial advice, anything like that. I really just, I have no idea. Now I am an NFT enthusiast. I love this community. This is something that I believe in long-term. And I really do think that we are still early to all of this. But with that being said, I have no idea if this is the bottom. The economy is bad. The macro is bad. We could still see more blood. There have been a lot of people that have been moving on from the NFT space. They've been willing to take a lot less than they would have taken if the market were better. And this Moonbird is a good example of that. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because this is a rank number four Moonbird that had a 200 ETH offer on it. I think it was the first week that these minted. The guy just sold it for 48 ETH, which is not far off from what the floor was the first week when Moonbirds minted and then went all the way to that 40 ETH floor. It's just kind of crazy for me to see something like this because I'm like, wow, like, you know, this is one of the rarest Moonbirds in the collection. And to see somebody let go of this relatively cheap is kind of telling of where we are in the NFT market as of right now. There are only a few blue chip projects. I guess you could say Yuga Labs, Moonbirds. Some people would throw Artifact and Doodles in there. And to see a lot of these blue chip projects that are bleeding out, it's very unfortunate and sad to see. So to move on into some Web2 news that's in relation to NFTs, Starbucks, they just announced something huge where they're implementing NFTs into their company. The title of this, Starbucks Brewing Revolutionary Web3 Experience for its Starbucks Rewards Members. And something that's interesting is they are trying to be one of the first companies to integrate NFTs with an industry-leading loyalty program at scale. And within the NFT community, a lot of people are seeing this as a good example of mass adoption which a lot of people are very happy about, such as myself. But with that being said, there was a much different 
response from normies. This guy goes, ha ha, this fucking sucks. NFTs fucking suck. And I'm glad for unions to take y'all to court for fighting labor laws. This guy goes, how the fuck am I going to drink an NFT Starbucks? What is the caffeine content of a bored ape? How can I put creamer in a pixel punk? What pastry goes well with Ethereum? You dumbass. This guy goes, wow, Starbucks can just fuck all the way off. As if the union busting wasn't bad enough, now they want to double down on planetary destruction. That's like one of my favorite ones. I love that. That's the, the, the planetary destruction. The, yeah, that's always a good argument. And this one just simply says, I hate you. And on a lighter note, Budweiser, who is the owner of Beer.eth, which is a good segue into the next thing that I wanted to talk about. But they actually tweeted this out earlier today, and I just thought it was very cool to see that Budweiser is actively putting out something where it's like Beer.eth on a can like that. That is amazing, not only for NFTs, but ENS domains as well. And I kind of scrolled through this and I was looking to see if there were any like huge troll tweets like there were for Starbucks, but instead it's just a bunch of people that are like shilling their bags. They're like shilling their, their like ENS domains. They're like, Oh dude, how about the verb that goes with it and all this stuff? And I'm just like, bro, are you kidding me? And on the topic of ENS, the next thing that I did want to talk about was the ENS community as a whole. And the reason why is because this is something that I do spend a lot of my time looking at. And I think that it is important to discuss because I think that there are a lot of people that are in NFTs that really aren't giving ENS domains a chance. And my thing has always been, if you're into PFPs, if you're in a metaverse land, if you're into NFTs in general, it makes sense to understand everything that's going on. Now, the thing that I mainly focus on are, are digits. And the reason why is because they're is a lot of liquidity behind these digits. If you're someone that's watching this and you're like, why do I care about digits? I actually did an interview with a couple people that are in the ENS community that were really able to explain it in a good way. And I'll link those down below and you can check those out if you're interested. I think the digits are going to be huge. I think the names are going to be huge. There's going to be certain words that are going to be huge in the future. But I also think that there's a lot of random shit that's being minted and that's getting volume that is going to end up in the category of 99% of NFTs that are going to go to zero. Now, what I will say is that ENS has been on a little bit of a bull run over the past like week or two, and it kind of crept up on me. So I haven't really been playing this cycle, but things did take off. The 999 club was at 17 ETH a month ago. Now it topped off at like 35 ETH. The 10K club, you, you could get these for one ETH a couple weeks ago. They went all the way to three. The 100K club, they went up all the way to 0.08. These were 0.02, not even a couple weeks ago. And you might say, okay, why do I care about this if I missed out on these digits? Well, there's a lot of people that actually missed out on, on these original digits that have come out with what I would call like derivative digits. These people are buying negative, the, the hyphen, the negative in front of digits. They've, they've started to get into, let's see, dollar sign in front of digits, underscore in front of digits, like all sorts of stuff. And these are seeing volume, but what's crazy is that a lot of these were minted really over the past couple of weeks. For example, negative 57.eth just sold for 2.5. Negative 84 just sold for 2.3. Like that, that's crazy to me. But what's crazier is that negative 84 was only minted 10 days ago. So while I do think that there are a lot of opportunities to still mint things that could see volume, long term I am really only bullish on the digits that are that are standalone digits, names and words. And what I will say is that once liquidity dries up, when this cycle cools off to the point where I already know that there's not going to be nearly as much volume as there is right now, that is the point in which I'm going to start placing my bets into ENS domains again. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was doodles. So doodles hadn't tweeted for about a month. Like their social media guy just decided to, to take a, 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 like a fucking break and, and they were just completely AFK, didn't say a single thing. And a couple days ago, they came out with this article, their first tweet back after everyone was memeing them and pretty much saying that they've been silent as shit. And they go, we're thrilled to announce that Doodles has raised $54 million at a $704 million valuation. I don't know why they just like went completely dark and then decided to come back with this announcement. Like, I feel like they could have at least had somebody tweeting something. But with that being said, I do think that this is overall bullish for Doodles in general. What is interesting to me 
And what I'm going to be watching is how they end up taking this money and how they end up building this brand that puts a return on investment into the hands of the original doodles holders. Because when this got announced, the floor of doodles was like 7.4 and then it mooned all the way to nine. And then it dropped back all the way to where it is right now at 7.7. .7. Now, if this was a bull market, these would have gone absolutely crazy. Like it would have been nuts. Like these would have flown, but the market's not that good. So it was only like a quick bump and then everything came back down. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was Ugolab's announcement of a chief gaming officer. We are so happy to welcome Spencer Tucker, AKA this guy, to the Yuga Labs family as our first chief gaming officer. Gaming will continue to be a top priority, no alpha yet. Tucker joins Yuga with nearly two decades of experience in the gaming industry. Previously, Tucker was the president of games at Scopely and served as senior vice president of product at Gree International. And personally, this is something that's great to see knowing that the other side is going to be coming out at some time in the future, knowing that that is going to be a gaming platform, that they are putting a lot of their efforts into trying to integrate NFTs into their own metaverse, their own world with the other side. And personally, I do believe that if NFTs as a whole are going to succeed, the industry leader Yuga Labs is going to end up leading that for the time being. So I think this is great. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. And hopefully we get some other side announcements. Hopefully we get some ape staking announcements. But this is definitely a good piece of information that I wanted to share with everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As usual, please drop a like, a comment below. Let me know how you enjoyed the video, the format, the content, all of that. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure to join my Discord if you haven't. All the links are going to be down below. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video.